Welcome back to Illini Drive. I'm your host, Josh Peace, joined alongside by Gabby Haidu. Gabby, how are you doing? Doing pretty good, I would say. Um, Thursday. Yeah. Good time. Um, actually, not a good time because I have horrible class schedule on Friday, which is so upsetting because I barely, I didn't even have class on Friday last year. So Thursday's really not my best day anymore. But we're, we're chugging along. I've had two coffees today, which has disgustingly become my normal. You want to hear what I drank yesterday? Sure. So yesterday was production, so I had to be at the office at 8 a.m. Um, that sucks. Um, and so at about, I'd say 11 o'clock, maybe like 10.30, 10.30, I got a double shot on ice from Starbucks, except it has five shots of espresso in and then I didn't really eat anything until I got home from production at like 12.30. Ate a little something, then had a bunch of stuff to do, and I was so tired, so I had another cup of coffee. Needless to say, I was not okay yesterday. Um, we had some issues. So, yeah, that is my coffee addiction, and it's becoming to the point where, like, two coffees is normal for me. I thought you were going to say not enough. That's better than that. It's also not enough. I was just talking to my friend about this today. I don't think caffeine, my body doesn't take caffeine. I think my body takes caffeine and makes me more tired. Don't ask me how because I don't know the science behind that. But I promise you it happens. Like I, I, yeah, I literally, I've been drinking coffee almost every day for a while, which is disgusting. I'm sorry to say that. But... It's gotten to the point where if I don't have two cups a day, like, we are not functioning. But then also I have two cups a day. I'm also not functioning. So I think I just need to stop drinking it. But then I get bad headaches. Yeah. my. So body, that's my coffee addiction. I used to drink a lot of coffee, like, one cup of coffee a day from Dunkin' consistently for many months. And then that probably started right before, right before quarantine, I think. Hold on. We're having a little minor technical issue. So on, on your coffee. There thing, we go. You okay, probably missed sorry, my intro. Probably didn't sorry hear about Josh that. at all. Okay. A L- little now. bit of a mic issue there. We're yeah. Josh Peace, your host. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh yeah, so right before quarantine started, I got a little bit of a caffeine addiction. I'd probably have a cup of coffee from Duncan consistently a day, but it would like my crash gabby was ve- it was really, really, really bad. Like I would was it like a good like four o'clock crash? No, it, it would like I'd probably drink it around like nine or ten because I like to get up early. I mm-hmm. used to get like to get up early, so around like two thirty, I would crash, which would not be good. That's the worst. So that that was probably around like March, April. So then in May, I stopped drinking coffee because like I, I don't need this. Like I'm I'm working, you know, a little later. Oh, you know, I'm gonna stop. So I stopped for a month or two, and that was really good. And then in July, I picked it back up again, and my body did not react well to the caffeine. It made me super anxious. I'd be off the walls. I'd be shaking. I'd be like, oh, no, like I cannot do this. So I quit again. Fast forward to the school year. I am busier than I've ever been in my life. And yesterday, I had a coffee, and it helped so much. Because when you're distracted, mm-hmm. when you're doing work, it can't make you anxious. Sorry. Exactly. Like, you're not, you're not going to you know, kill me, but then when it, you know... When I crashed, I crashed again, which is fine, though, because then I just got to go to bed at midnight or there you w- go. whatever. Midnight was pretty early last night. Yeah, but that so is pretty early. I didn't have any today, even though I was even busier today. So maybe I'm back on the coffee, too. I'm, ta- I'm taking your bad habits, Gabby. Back on the coffee grind. The coffee grind is serious. Well, like, the, the other thing is that it takes and I lost three bucks re- a day out of my pocket. Oh, my God. Mine takes, like, more. But mine, I lost my reusable cup. So... Now, when I go to the office in the morning, I have to go to Starbucks. Mm-hmm. So I'm spending like at least ten dollars a week on Starbucks, and then like probably like ten dollars a week on Dunkin'. So like twenty to thirty dollars a week on coffee. I mean, Grandma, Grandpa, Aunt Melissa, if you're listening, could use some coffee money now, Gabby. I'm sure it's the same for your relatives. Oh, for sure. If you could have like. 15, 20 bucks a week just for coffee. That fu- that would solve so many that financial issues in my so life. So many issues. All right. Well, away, we'll, away we'll from the coffee, coffee grind to get, to get into today's show. So 
The NCAA is giving all athletes for at least the fall of this year an extra year of eligibility for uh, just, you know, if you choose to take it to play sports again. And that could that could affect a lot of the football players on this team. Blake Hayes, the punter, who's one of the top punters in the country, keep in mind, said that he's already planning on like he'd love to come back to school. He loves it here. And he implied that he is going to use that option and play again. Other players like Josh Matter Bebe, uh, Brandon Peters, Vidarian Lowe, a lot of guys along the lines of that that aren't totally sure if they're going to get drafted mm-hmm. or not. Those are the type of guys that I could see using this rule. Gabby, what do you think? Do you think that we could have a lot of guys back next year? Yeah, I think so. I think another thing is just um, still a lot of COVID uncertainty, like especially if this season doesn't actually go through. Um, not saying that it won't start, but like if we don't get through a season because of COVID or because of whatever, um, a lot of guys aren't kind of like what you were saying. A lot of guys aren't going to have enough NFL tape to bring to the draft and to have teams confident in them. Because again, a lot of these guys that we're considering as draft picks, besides I would say like a couple linemen, yeah. you know, your Doug Kramer, your uh, Alex Palchewski, yep. they're very borderline. And if you only, if Brandon Peters only plays three games this year, his tape from 2019 isn't good enough for him to get drafted. He needs to have a solid last season in college for teams to even consider him. Yeah. So a guy like him, if I only get three games in this year, I'm thinking, heck yeah, I'm going back next year because the odds of me getting drafted are obviously higher, but then you're not he's probably not going to get picked up in free agency if he doesn't get drafted this year. Um, Assuming there's, you know, if, okay, let me restart. (laughs) I just got, I confused myself, but if there's not an entire season this fall and he doesn't get drafted, I doubt he gets picked up in free agency. So then he's probably going to come back because I'm sure his dreams are the NFL. And I'm sure a lot of these guys, you know, you mentioned Bebe, a Trayvon Sydney, um, even someone, and here's the interesting thing to me. Um, about a month ago, I did interviews with a couple of the uh, senior linemen, like Palchuski and Doug Kramer. And Alex Palchuski even said, he was like, if I have the opportunity to go back again next year, I'll probably take it. Because he want, he want his reasoning was so funny. He was like, I just want to play with my bros. See, that's really interesting. He's like, interesting I just to want to be at school with my bros. That's really interesting um, to me I was like, what? because if I think that if he plays at all this year, I, I told you, Gabby, I think that he could be as high as a third round draft pick. I think he could I think be, he'd a, be really, yeah. really good. But, and I mean, circumstances have changed since I've right. talked to him. Obviously, they're going to play season now. This is when they weren't playing a season. So maybe his thoughts has, have changed, but I don't know. He was pretty like cool with coming back for a year and just playing with you know, his best friends. I mean, him and the linemen, the other offensive linemen have been playing together since their freshman year. Even like Doug Kramer, um, Doug Kramer's a year older, um, but he redshirted a a season. So they've all been together since Palchewski and Vidarian Lowe's um, freshman year. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be seriously shocked if he was like one of the people who chose to come back as well. But, I mean, how could you pass up if he was hearing he was going to go in, like, the third round? I don't know if he would pass it up, but if he was hearing he was going maybe fifth or sixth, I could see him maybe coming back and just trying to keep improving. I feel like offensive, any position you could have to improve, but offensive linemen, if you can improve your body each year, that's going to knock you up a couple draft yeah. picks. So I wouldn't be too shocked to say that happen. Yeah, I mean— I think that Alex Pelchuski is definitely the safest to line out to get drafted. I think that that's yeah. like a consensus decision, and he, and he should be. He has a good size. He's quick. We saw what he did last year, and he wasn't even like he wasn't even happy with his tape last year. So we know how good he is. And I think Kendrick Green is going to leave a le- year early. I think that he plans on that. I know that he wasn't even positive about playing in the spring. Um, so those two for sure. For me, the third safest to get drafted on the offense is Doug Kramer. Mm-hmm. Doug Kramer is also very undersized. So if he plays less games than these big SEC, ACC, Big 12 guys, and he, he's a center too, 
if they sneak up on him in the draft, Doug Kramer is someone that I think that could really benefit from an extra year because even though he's undersized, it would just be another year of him showing how good he is. And then, like, age doesn't really matter in the NFL. Like, the average career is only about three years. So even if you get in there as late as this wouldn't happen but 25, you know, that that doesn't really matter like it does the NBA or something like that. So if he could use another year to prove his worth, I'm not saying he should if he's already thinks that he can be a late round draft pick, but he's another guy that could benefit. And then, like we said, Gabby, Brandon Peters, Josh Matterbebe, Verdarian Lowe, Trayvon Sidney, guys that would need a pretty darn good senior season to sneak into the draft. But if they didn't, we could see them back again next year. And like this team this year is supposed to be pretty darn good. This is going to be the best of the Lovey Smith era. Imagine how good a team could be the next year with an extra year of Peters, these linemen, the receivers like Bebe. You think of guys like a Casey Washington who will be in his junior year. Um, How about Marquez Beeson on the defense? Marquez Beeson, Brian Hightower. um, Something I want to mention. Isn't 2021 the Ireland year? Like next year. James McCourt is Irish. Right. Is he from Ireland or is he just like full-blown Irish? I know, I'm pretty sure he has family in Ireland. I believe he does, yeah. I'm not sure if he's from Ireland. Sorry about that. I don't know. Um, it says he's from Florida on the roster. But who Maybe knows? it's just Whatever. He has family in Ireland. Yeah. He's Irish. And he even talked about how he was not, like, actually upset, but, like, joking around upset that he was going to be graduated by the time they were playing the Ireland game. Obviously, who even knows if that game is still on, um based on obviously just travel and COVID by that time and uh, the athletic department's funds, if they can still fund that. But I was just looking at the roster and I thought about that. I was like, that'd be so cool if he used his extra year of eligibility just to go, not just to go to Ireland, but But like that'd be so cool for a guy like that. So I think there's a lot of incentives to come back just because obviously this year's going to be really good. But if, Three fourths of the seniors come back That's for huge. another year, including some juniors who could get drafted. Next year might even be better than this year. Obviously, it depends who comes back. Well, Brandon Peters is a big one, right? Brandon Peters is a big X factor because yeah. who's your starting quarterback if he leaves? So the thing that I was thinking with that is you have Robinson, who played well against Michigan. He held it took his him own. a half to do it. Yeah, yeah. he held his own. But didn't play well against Northwestern, but then yeah. again, half the team was out and it was the raining. Team, the whole team didn't play well. So then you, you move on from him, and it's Isaiah Williams, who's your four-star, borderline five-star recruit from Texas. Who is who, very up and, like, unproven. Who probably should be a skill position player, but wants to play quarterback, and that's fine because him and Lovey talked about that. So I guess, you know, if Peters does leave, which we should expect to happen because that's what we should be expecting anyways. Mm-hmm. It's Robinson, it's Williams, or it's a true freshman. And none of those options or are... Or a transfer. Or a transfer. Of course a transfer. I That's the thing is I feel like if Peters leaves after this season, Lovey's going to go transfer route. Hey, it's transfer you. you. Had, transfer you. It's like, you had success with Brandon. I mean, I think he improved the offense, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest thing would just be... The offensive linemen, what they decide to do with that, or what those offensive linemen decide to do. Um, Because if they all came back for another season, that'd be the best, no doubt, line, uh, offensive line in the country. Even if Palchuski left, it could be still pretty good. Blake, I can't say his last name, Gerasati. Gerasati. He's definitely he's, going to be back next he, year. Well, yeah, because yeah. he had season-ending shoulder injury or shoulder surgery before they knew the season was mm-hmm. going to be back. So he'll obviously be back. Um, but he's obviously someone who could fill a Doug Kramer spot. Um, I think he played center at Wofford, and now he's been moved to what position? Uh, hey, hold, guard? It's left guard or left tackle. Okay. Um, um, or right guard or right tackle, yeah. Yeah, so... Even if one of those guys left on the line, he could fill that spot. Um, and you still have a couple younger offensive linemen who haven't, you know, Jordan Slaughter. Um, he's played some snaps. He's looked good. Um, so, yeah, I don't, Julian Pearl, um, he's younger. So you have a lot to work with on the line, which is obviously a good thing. Um, but if all those guys came back, I mean, that's unstoppable. Yeah, I don't think the quarterback will ever get sacked. 
The interesting thing to me is because when I wrote about this, I thought the three guys that had, because, okay, so remember that thing I was saying on Instagram, the one analyst thought that the Big Ten QB who's benefiting most of this uh, from getting to play again in the Big Ten is Brandon Peters because he has a lot to prove. And if he sneaks in as a top five or six, maybe top four Big Ten quarterback, there's your draft pick. Mm-hmm. If he's inconsistent, if Josh Amater Bebe doesn't get more consistent, and then on the line, the most inconsistent has been Vidarian Lowe. These are the three key guys to me that need a consistent year. If they don't prove that for eight, nine games, I, I don't think there would be a tenth, no matter what. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. But if those eight, if this shortened season doesn't help them prove consistency, boom, next year, probably everything's up in the air with COVID, but probably a 12 game season that could help you so much. And then on the defensive side, like Eifler and Hobbs are those two would probably get drafted anyways. Same thing. You You need more consistent. I I think so. I would say more Eifler than more Eifler. Hobbs would need to be more consistent too, and probably just a little bit more production. Yeah. I don't see him getting drafted. I could see him getting free agency. Like yeah, undrafted maybe. free agent signing somewhere. Maybe he need, especially as a defensive back. Yeah, he would need yeah. a little bit more. But but that's what I'm saying though. That's what this extra year of eligibility yeah. would do these guys because if you stay the extra year, that could mean I mean draft picks like you still get paid a decent amount of money. Being any college coach right now, and obviously this isn't what they're thinking about right now. They're thinking about the season in four weeks, but like trying to recruit for next like for the coming years yeah. has to be probably the hardest job in college football right now. Like trying to figure out roster size and scholarships and, you know, depth charts and things like that. I think the next few years, if not several years of college football is going to be really weird as far as like recruitment goes and um, just the depth of teams I think you're going to see a lot of changes. Um, I don't know. It's going to be weird. I under, I also wonder how this is going to affect the, you know, Ohio States of the world. Like, mm-hmm. because people go to Ohio State and Alabama and Georgia and Auburn to go pro. But there are a lot of guys from there that get drafted in late rounds too or just miss the draft and get signed as free agents. Like, is Alabama just going to be a super house now? Like, even more of a powerhouse than it is because they have all these guys coming back that aren't, yeah. that want to become a third or fourth round draft pick instead of a fifth or sixth? Like, this is going to create some, like, I think that next year in college football could be one of, like, the deepest years we're seeing. I agree. Because one of those sleeper teams, like, usually we have the usual suspects, right? Clemson, LSU, Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma. Like, what about a team like Texas? They have a lot of guys usually go pro too, but maybe since they've like lately been a sleeper team, they could sneak up there as well. I think I think I love this extra year of eligibility. I think it's great. It's interesting. And it'll be interesting to see how many guys take it to get better, how many guys leave to get drafted, or how many seniors are just like done. Yeah. Like they know they're never gonna go pro. Maybe they're just over it. Not over it, but like they're borderline undrafted free agents maybe well like what about that. daniel matter baby isn't this his sixth year in college i think that if he were to play this year and next year that would be seven years in college that's, that's a, a long time a lot. like i feel like and obviously whatever he wants to do is great but personally i would just be ready to move on at yeah. that point unless you really think that you're gonna make it to the pros and you know you have to bet on yourself at some point which i understand but I don't know. That's just seven years in college seems too much. I love college. Don't get me wrong, but that's a lot of time. I can't find him on the roster right now. So let me do some digging. All right. Well, while you do some digging, we're going to take a break. Uh, Yeah, we got some more football talk next on Illini Drive. Welcome back to Alana Drive. A little bit of college football news. Pretty substantial news, actually. Uh, the Pac-12 plans to play seven-game slate starting in November. Breaking news from ESPN. So it looks like all Power Five, each of the Power Five conferences are back playing college football this fall. Exciting. Um, yeah, well, it looks like, I don't know. I mean, the Big Ten made their decision in August because I assume they thought everyone would follow. The Pac-12 did. The other three didn't. 
So now that the Big Ten came back, you can assume the Pac-12 came would come back. I saw this coming right when the Big Ten speculation started. I don't know about you, Gabby. Not too much of a surprise, but yeah. it's, it's good for them. I mean, like yeah. teams like Oregon, Arizona, Washington, they have legitimate dra- draft prospects. Like, And the kids want to play, too. So yeah. happy for them. Yeah, I feel like we kind of all saw this coming. Yeah. It's just funny how the Pac-12 just like kind of follows the Big Ten. Uh, big Ten's the big brother. Whatever. We're the leaders. No big deal. Um, but, yeah, no, it's cool that all Power Five conferences are playing again. Um, it'll be interesting to see how rankings go in college football playoffs. I'm interested to see how that all is going to pan how that all is going to pan out. But I think for a Pac-12 team to make the college football playoff, Oregon or whoever, I'm just using them as, as yeah. an example, would have to go 7-0, beat two really good teams convincingly. Then mm-hmm. maybe they could get in. Yeah. Because if they lose one game, you're out. Like, it doesn't even matter who you lose to or by how much. Yeah, that's the problem with, like, this year is it's going to be so hard. Yeah. It's going to be just SEC teams. SEC and ACC. Yeah. Which, when is it not? True. We haven't seen three SEC teams before. Could this be the year? No. Hey, if Ohio State loses, you know, to Penn State in week two, Oklahoma finds a way to lose to Texas and it's not pretty, like... Georgia, yeah. LSU, Alabama. Could be the year. Could be the year. Could be the year. I think that the as we were talking about before, the extra year of eligibility, the Pac-12, I don't think like everyone's going to use it on there, unless you're like a surefire first or second rounder. Yeah. I think that we're going to see a lot. Like the big, What I'm saying is the Pac-12 is going to be a strong conference next year. Yeah. Stronger than it usually is. Usually the Pac-12 doesn't get a ton of national attention. Agreed. So something you mentioned before, Gabby, before the break was that you were wondering how um, this is going to, you know, alter with like recruiting and stuff like that. But now that the Big Ten and Pac-12 are back, do you think that it's going to, you know, like it would have been before SEC teams and Big 12 and ACC are like, all right, like these teams like don't even want to play. We're the ones playing. Now that they're back, do you think that there's going to be any shortness of recruiting in the Big Ten now that they're playing? Or is it because it's a nine-game schedule or just because they canceled initially, initially recruits are going to hold off on the Big Ten and Pac-12 a little bit? Um, I could see maybe some of the top recruits, like the top top, that you know might go to Ohio State. Um, maybe them having a little um, hesitancy. But I think now, especially with high school football being weird too, I'm sure a lot of these guys are just going to Take what they can get as mm-hmm. far as recruit like being recruited at the Big Ten level. Like I said, maybe some of those like big star guys might opt to go to the SEC because you know things are football's a little more established there right now. Like they're less willing to pull the trigger on football um, than a Big Ten or a Pac-12 conference. But I think with everybody playing now, you're going to see some recruits start to open their minds a little more again. Also, they haven't had football hasn't had a lot of chances lately to recruit. Right. So I don't think anything's really been missed out on yet. Um, but if they went into the winter without being having anything played and went into that recruiting time period, I think things would have been changed and Big Ten would have gotten less recruits. But I think now that everything's pretty much similar to each other, like all the conferences are playing or are scheduled to play. I think everything's going to stay pretty even. Yeah, I agree. I I think that it would have been affected majorly before, which is a Mm -hmm. big reason that the Big Ten did it. Well, according to Chancellor Jones and Josh and Lovey, it's not a big reason that they decided to play. But like, let's think about this. If the Big Ten doesn't play at all, I still think it'll affect the top recruits, but like all those top guys wouldn't even be looking at, you know, like Iowa still sometimes get top guys, Minnesota, Nebraska, even if some of them would still look at Ohio State, like the rest of the Big Ten would get no attention, in my opinion, which was why it was such a big uh, decision for them to come back. Do I? Unfortunately, I think you're right that the top top guys, just for like you know, no uh, no interference in their college careers, just in case something like this happens again, they might overlook the Big Ten. But unfortunately, the top like the top guys are the top for a reason. Like that's mm-hmm. the best talent in the country. So I hope nothing like that happens. I can't say what I would do if I were a recruit, but it, at least they're playing now, so that you know, at least recruits aren't just like okay, if you're not even going to play a season, like I'm yeah. stepping back. No, I agree. I think another thing recruits are going to have to consider is if they're one of those guys who thinks they can play right away. 
you have to consider schools that aren't going to have a lot of these big senior stars returning. I think that's the thing recruits should be focusing on this year is, um, you know, what teams are going to have spots for me to get playing time. Because, if I mean, obviously, if you're like a three-star guy who kind of knows you're going to redshirt freshman year, okay, whatever, it doesn't really affect me. But if you're one of those four-star, five-star guys who's looking to play right away, you might consider a different school, maybe not in Ohio State, maybe not in a Georgia, you know what I mean? Yeah. And try and go somewhere where you think you're going to get more playing time. So I think that'll factor in a little. But also, I'm not sure if, you know, they might just have the mindset, well, I can beat out anybody type of thing. Well, I think that, and I, I know that Alabama is the most famous for this, is they have like five-star freshmen sitting on the bench, barely playing, you know, gain any playing time. So Alabama kind of expect, expects this. I know that Ohio State's a little bit of an, of an exception to the rule. Like, we'll see freshman stars come out and shine at Ohio State, and we'll see it everywhere, but I think it's more popular at an Ohio State than it is at Georgia and LSU at Clemson, something like that, so... But you're right. Even with that said, maybe some of these star guys would be like, hey, if all these seniors are staying at LSU, Oklahoma, even Texas, because they do so well with recruiting every year somehow, like, you're right. This could be a bigger opportunity for the smaller schools, which is why next year is the one year, realistically, in my opinion, we could see, you know, um, a, a new champion, like not one of the basic ones. So I don't know. I In, in a way, like Corona is messing everything up but at the Mm -hmm. same time it makes things interesting for the future no i agree i think sports are in just such a weird place right now i mean we see with the nba like the heat who would have if this were a normal season i don't think the heat would have gone as far as of course not no so like sports in general are going to be in a weird place for the next few years um college sports are going to be no different obviously you're going to have guys come back guys have their seventh year in college Um, But you're also going to see maybe a lot of different draft picks this year and guys, you know, being more unlikely to get drafted if seasons don't uh, follow through as planned at the college level. So it'll be interesting. The next few years for sports are up in the air. So you mentioned uh, like the heat, how you don't think they would be here uh, if it weren't Corona time. Well, they are here, and the, since the last time we talked, the Nuggets and Heat have both won games. So yes. the Nuggets Easy. won up three to one on the Celtics, which I am shocked about. And the Nuggets won not convincingly, but they kept, kept their lead. They held on and beat the Lakers by was it eight or ten or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so now Lakers up are up two one. They are up two one, and the Nuggets and Lakers play again tonight. And then he just won again yesterday. So it's three one, and they play three, tomorrow. One. I think the Heat might win. Jimmy Butler's a win away from the conference final. I mean, the 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 NBA finals. That's insane. Good for him. I'm good very for happy Tyler Hero. For him. Tyler Hero. He went. He's a off. walking. But I, I get Devin Booker vibes from. Uh, really, yeah. he's just insane. Very confident. What do you think for tonight? The see, if you're the Lakers, you're not in a good position here because if you lose, it's two two. But if you win, three you to do one. the dreaded three to one the that the Nuggets one. have, like are fueled off of nuggets have are literally love the three and one. I don't know. I, but are the Lakers really going to get phased by three and one? I don't know. No LeBron AD. I think the Lakers win tonight. Yeah. I think nuggets might get one more game. So I think we might see a game six. I don't think LeBron's letting it get to game seven against the nuggets. No offense to the nuggets. Yeah. They, they're a good team. They've played very well. But they're not, I don't think they match up to LeBron in 80s level. So we'll see. I think it should be another good game. I think I've literally never watched as much NBA as I have Same. lately. Same. It's just so good. Every game is so competitive. My I love pr- it. My predictions, I, I was one for two last time we were on the show. I predicted okay. the Nuggets to win in game three, but yeah. I predicted the Celtics to tie it up. So my predictions have been somewhat off. I'm going to, I think the Nuggets are going to pull another one out tonight. I think that, in my opinion, the Nuggets didn't even play that well the other night. Yeah. They're also pretty deep because obviously the best two players in that series are LeBron and AD. No one can question that. But then Jokic, Murray, MPJ, and maybe even like Jeremy Grant or something like that. Like Mm -hmm. those four are better than whoever the Lakers have next. So even though I still think the Lakers will probably win the series over them, 
I could see them tying it up at twos tonight. Jamal Murray, we're going to have another Jamal Murray game. Really? Yeah, I, I, I think so. The only thing is, I could see the Nuggets winning tonight, maybe, and then LeBron just being like, I took it personally. I'm done. I <laughs> I took that personally, Michael Jordan. Um, and just be like, nope, and then blow him out the last two games. I could see that. Maybe the Nuggets have won like one more win in them. Yeah. I think the Nuggets have one more win in them. I'm not sure when it's gonna come. Nothing against the greatest of all time for the whole personal thing there, but I do think that, that LeBron so is gonna take that mentality a little bit. I think, I think LeBron's so always had a little bit of that mentality. LeBron's also mad at Bronny. Bronny Bronny posted on his story a graphic smoking, image yeah graphic image that that was not good not suitable for the, the other thing about that if we're gonna briefly mention that like not only <laughs> should you like be mad at your son for doing that but not only is your dad a public figure so yeah. are you kid like I know buddy I'm sure that it was you're an only accident. like 15 or 16 years old but that yeah. even though it's legal in some states, like that's not legal to you no matter what. <laughs> and you know that the sti- the stigma around smoking something like that. Yeah. Th- that, that, that was, was a dumb inf- move. If he's gonna yeah, get his dumb sh- you know, antics out of the way yeah. now, I guess it's better that he's a fifteen or sixteen year old, but And everyone's gonna be like, he's a kid, it's fine. Which like yeah. I'm not I I feel bad for Bronny because he's been in the spotlight since he came out of the womb. Yeah, so, pretty much. Literally, uh, the minute he was named LeBron Jr. was the yeah. second the spotlights were on him. So I'm sure he's just a normal 15, 16 year old kid. But like, he's got to be more careful. But shout out, Bronny. He's pretty good. Uh, he's, hey, but you know who beat him when he played him? Andre Curbelo. Andre Curbelo did. Oh, I can't wait for November 25th. I know. I'm really excited. We're getting close. Not really. Two months away. Two All months right. from tomorrow. Yes. Something Ooh, to celebrate. Something to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate tonight. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to preview the this week's uh, NFL slot of games. That's next on Alana Drive. Welcome back to Illini Drive. All right, so usually on the Thursday show, we like to preview all the NFL games uh, for the week. Pretty good slot of games here again for week three. La- week two was really, really good. I think that week three will not uh, will not disappoint either. Tonight's game, on the other hand, is not so intriguing. Uh, last week was Browns uh, and Bengals, which was two young ro- uh, rookie quarterbacks, including Joe Burrow, going at it. This week, it's the Miami Dolphins at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Gabby, do you think you're going to watch tonight? There's another pretty important game on. We'll note that. Yeah, I'll honestly probably watch NBA instead of NFL. I'm not very interested. I I mean, I'm sure it'll be an okay game, maybe. You know, Tua Tagovailoa is not playing yet for Miami. Yeah. Gardner Minshew's fun, but the rest of the Jack, there's problems down in Jacksonville. Like they are not a good. That is not a good team. They have a lot of work to do. Yeah, so. I'd probably, I'm probably going to go Miami to win this one, honestly. You know what? I think Jacksonville's going to win okay. at home. Interesting. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. All right, who do your Steelers play this week? Uh, Texans, who are hungry for a win after going 0-2. J.J. Yeah. Watt is mad, and he's facing both his brothers, so you know he's going to show out and wreck Ben Roethlisberger, which is not going to be a good sight to see. Um, or no, yeah, he's gonna wreck Ben Rock. He's on the yeah. Yeah, JJ Watts a Texan. T. No, Watt I know, a... I know. Yeah, no. What were you confused about there? Position. I was okay. messing yeah. up. Ignore me. Ignore sure. me. Either way, JJ Watts probably gonna wreck Ben Roethlisberger because he's going up against both his brothers. Of course, he's gonna show out. You know what I mean? There's yeah. no way he doesn't. And he said it was all over Twitter. He's sick of losing. There's as much as I'm going to ride with my Steelers and say they're going to win. I'm not very confident in this one. Another game I'm really looking forward to is the uh, the Rams at the Bills. Two two and O teams. Josh Allen, who is my favorite player in the NFL, against Jared Goff, and that like that offense for the Rams is red hot right now. I, I think that's going to be a really good game. Buffalo's defense, who. I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm I'm mad that that's another twelve o'clock game because that game. I know there's, there's a ton so of many good twelve o'clock games. o'clock games. 
Uh, Ve- Vegas at New England. That's another really good one. Um, and then, so that's the other 12 o'clock games are Washington football team at Cleveland, Tennessee at Minnesota. That Tennessee Minnesota game is actually pretty good too. San Fran at the Giants, uh, two injury plague teams. Bengals at Eagles. Eagles need to get their first one under their belt. So that's it for the 12 o'clock games. Okay. So some pretty good ones there again. And then at 305, Jets at Colts, which is an okay game. Uh, Panthers and Chargers. I wonder if Justin Herbert will start again there. Buccaneers at the Broncos. That's a pretty good game. Tom Brady on the road. Yeah. Uh, Detroit at Arizona. Here's the big one. Dallas at Seattle. And then Sunday night football is Green Bay at New Orleans. A great game. Followed by definitely the game of the week. Monday night. Kansas City, Baltimore. I don't. That game's going to be so good. It's going to be a great game. I obviously want the Chiefs to win because the Ravens are in my division. But I think the Ravens might win. I, w- I would take the Ravens. I think I'm going to. I I think if I was picking the game, I would take the Ravens. All right, so we'll start with this one then for our predictions for the week. Kansas City, Baltimore. Who do you have? Baltimore. Score. I don't know because ugh, defense is good, but Patrick Mahomes is still going to score. Ravens are going to score. Um, I'm going to go Ravens. 24, Chiefs 21. So I remember very vividly two years ago, there was a game like this between the Chiefs and the Patriots, and the final score was 45 42. Mm-hmm. I think the Chiefs won, but I'm not 100% I sure. I think you want to up my score. I'm going to go 41 38. 41? Baltimore. Okay. Let Actually, me, let me change my score. I think Baltimore, but. Holmes is so good. Let me go. Let me try and do the math here. I think Chiefs are going to score three touchdowns and two field goals. So what is that? 27. 27? Three touchdowns, two field goals, 27. So I'll go 30, 27 Ravens. You convinced. You really didn't. But now I feel like I need to. 41, 38 Ravens. 30, Except for I don't want to have the exact same score. So I'll go 42, 34 Chiefs. Should I go Chiefs or Ravens? Chiefs are good on the road. And I think they're going to be pretty. Well, take they the weren't Chiefs last because I'm taking the Ravens. Sure. Yeah, we I'll, I'll be, take the Chiefs. Yeah. The usually we don't keep. Usually we keep track of the Thursday game. Yeah. Let's keep. Let's do Monday game. For this do, week right. The Thursday game is. Uh, I'm going to take the Jaguars like in that game. Okay. I'm taking the Dolphins. All right. But I don't. This Monday night game, I don't know. This is tough because Mahomes is like Lamar Jackson was the MVP last year and he's been good so far, but obviously the Chiefs are a different animal. I'm going to go 42 34 Chiefs. Okay. That could be very wrong. 34. 42 34 Chiefs. 42 34. Okay. And you have 30 27 Ravens. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. uh, First one listed on ESPN Chicago at Atlanta. Okay. You want to hear something? Let's hear it. Me and my family do like game picks. Sure. I picked the Bears. So don't let me down. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. Do you think the hungry Atlanta Falcons after blowing one of the worst? I'm putting my trust in in stupid Mitch Trubisky because why not? Why not? All right. Why not? I'll take the Bears too. I'm going to go... Will it come down to the very last play? I don't know. 27-23 Bears. What do you think? 27-23. I'm going to go 24-23 Bears. All right. Um, Los Angeles Rams at Buffalo. Rams. I'm going to go Buffalo, and I think it's going to be... 20, we need to give some weird scores. Uh, 29 to 17. I'll go. I really like Buffalo's defense. 28. Or I'm going to go 25. Give me a 25 somehow. 25 Rams, 23 Bills. Washington football team at Cleveland Browns. Well, I will not be watching this game. I will not. <laughs> We're not even making a score prediction, but I'm just going to go Browns. Browns, yeah. Home. I'll take the Browns too. Titans at Vikings. 
It's a good game. Ooh. It's a really good game. I'll go Vikings. This is a last week game. This I don't is a very have a, last I don't have a score game. prediction for you though. Uh I will take the Titans. Okay. And yeah. Ra- Ooh, Las Vegas Raiders at Patriots, another great game. I'm gonna go Patriots. They're hungry after that last second loss. Let's ride Vegas. Okay. Three and zero for the Raiders. Forty uh, ers at Giants. Say it with me. Forty ers I thought you were gonna say Giants uh, there. I thought you were gonna say Giants. <laughs> no. Forty ers Bang- You know, half their team is out. Bengals at the winless Eagles. Eagles. But I need Joe Burrow yeah. to do good, to do well. Yeah. Excuse my grammar, because I'm starting him over Tom Brady. Tom Brady has failed me too. Texans at Steelers. I know you're going to say Texans. I'm going to go Steelers. I'm going to gonna ride an, with my Steelers. Right now, you want to put another meal bet on it? Not not like a double or nothing. Like, I owe you. Okay, you still owe me McDonald's. I owe you yours, and that's solidified. This can't change it. Fine. So, another okay, one. but we have to, it has to be different from McDonald's in case I win. Sure. Let's go. Do you like Pop Belly? Yeah. All right. I was actually just going to say that. Oh that's a little bit more expensive one. It's not a triple deck or quarter burger that's meal fine. or whatever it is, but that's fine. But just a sandwich or a meal? Hey, I'm going for a meal. Okay, meal. So I got the Texans. You got the Steelers. Yeah. Score prediction for me, a little low scoring, 24-16 Texans. Okay, I'm going to say it's pretty defense-oriented as well. I'm going to go... Tw- I'm going to go two, three touchdowns and a field goal. I'm going to go 24... 24... Tw- two touchdowns. 24-20. 24 Steelers. 20. Steelers. All right. Of into course. the three o'clock slate. Jets at Colts. Um, Colts. Yeah. Easy. Jets will stay winless. Uh, yeah. Carolina at Chargers. Justin Herbert. First NFL Chargers. win. Chargers. Chargers. Uh, Brady at Denver. Tampa Bay at Denver. Brady. Assuming Drew Locke's out, I will Drew Locke also, is out. Yeah, He's out for a few weeks. Tampa. Detroit Lions at Arizona Cardinals. That's a good game. Cardinals. I'm going Cardinals, but that's going to be a lot that, better be game good. than people think. Yeah. All right, big one. Dallas at Seattle. Seattle, for sure. Dallas is steaming hot. I don't like Dallas, so I'm going Seattle. Uh, I'm going to take Seattle, too. Russell Wilson's so good. Green Bay. Something about Dallas being America's team, I don't like. I hate it. So I will never win Dallas. I hate Dallas. it. Yeah. Never. I ever. feel like the second team is the Packers, which I also hate for obvious reasons. But mm. yeah, for like Jerry Jones, Cowboys, Texas. I don't like the Cowboys. I'm just not big on the uh, on the whole America's team. It, it, it feels like you're forced to root for them. Like, why do the Cowboys get a Thanksgiving game? I don't know. I don't. Like I think that. America's team should be the Steelers. Okay. We have the most. Super That's Bowl a hot games. take. Anyways, keep going. Uh, last one, Green Bay at New Orleans. That's a very, very Green good Bay. game Aaron considering Rogers. what's happening. All right. Green Bay. So before I give my prediction, I've been offered a trade in Fantasy Gabby. Not in our league, in my other league. Okay. In our league, I'm 2-0. Oh, I'm the best. Yeah, I'm 0-2, whatever. But I'm 0-2 in my other league. Okay. So I'm I'm going to run this by you real quick. Okay. And based on what you say, I'll consider it and okay. I'll make my decision for the trades. Okay. Aaron Rodgers, the, uh, he's offering me Aaron Rodgers and Robert Woods because Drew Brees is my quarterback right now, and he's lost okay. me two weeks in a row. Like, very, very close. Drew Ooh. Brees hasn't played well. So Aaron Rodgers and Robert Woods for Tyreek Hill. No. The other offer Drew Brees is will pick it up. Rodgers and more for the Panthers for Tyreek Hill. No. You're saying don't get rid of Hill? No, don't get rid of Hill. Well, in that Drew case, Brees will, Drew Brees will start to pick it up. Well, in that case, I'm going to take the Saints because Drew Brees is going to throw for four or five touchdowns Perfect. and 300 something yards, and I'm taking the Saints. I love it. All right. All right. Prediction, we'll predictions are in. Predictions are in. We'll see you guys Tuesday. That's going to be it. From Gabby and Josh, this has been Illini Drive.